All right, guys, so this is the uh, leather sheath build video. Um, right now we're in Photoshop. This is where I do most of the mock-ups for, you know, any builds that I make just to see which direction I'm going to take to make sure everything is going to function and, you know, aesthetically be <laughs> what I'm looking for. But um, from there, I bring it into CAD, you know, draw everything up, have all the stitching lines, all the mounting holes, all the parts that need to be actually cut out. Uh, there's a little little seam right there in the middle because again the Glowforge cuts pretty large, but um, I, I couldn't fit the whole piece all on uh, all on one piece of leather. So here we are taking that CAD into Adobe Illustrator, and then uh, you know from Adobe Illustrator I would bring all these files individually to the Glowforge to get cut out, and, uh, and there we are just slicing everything out. It would be uh, pretty amazing if I cut this fast. I mean it does cut fast but with all those holes it does take some time but you know compared to hand tooling this definitely definitely fast. Uh, after this veg tan leather I hop over to some uh, this is technically veg tan leather that has been stamped with an alligator skin. Um, you know there I, I did that first cut because uh, I hadn't cut this type of material before you know it, it's stamped and it has a lot of textures and ridges and it's just a little bit thinner than the than the typical leather that I use so I was just kind of playing with the settings but you know with the Glowforge it's like do a test cut change some settings and then you're good to go and here's some little little insets that I you know took a razor blade to so that the alligator skin could sit almost flush on the inside Kind of like a little little window sitting inside there. The uh, the idea with that came out. Will Stelter had posted a video. Um, he had a a woman on that she made uh, a leather sheath for one of his knives, and she inlaid. I believe it was American Beaver Tail. And uh, Steph and I were watching that video, and we were like, "Wow, that looks really cool." So uh, I ran up to Tandy Leather and got the hardware for this build. Um, as well as the, the stain and the uh, alligator skin. Yeah, and the saddle tan was really nice. Uh, first time using this stain. Um, not the brand, I've been using this brand of stain for uh, a little over a year now, but uh, the saddle tan was a really nice, nice stain. But yeah, the uh, the inset it was it was quite a feat to do uh, to sit there with a a razor blade and you know basically carve out the inside windows and uh, and I didn't really leave myself a lot of room, especially there across the top of the of the sheath. I think there's about sixty thousandths of material there, <laughs> so it was pretty thin. But uh, yeah, and here we are to hand stitching. Um, you know, I've, I've posted quite a few videos of me hand stitching leather. It's it's definitely a uh, a meditative state. You know, put on some music, and then uh, and then just have some fun, because you know, even with even with this amount of stitching to go, you're going to be here for quite a few hours. So it's definitely relaxing, um, but again, it's a good time to just put on music, get in the zone. <laughs> and yeah, it would be uh, it would be really awesome if I could hand stitch this fast as well. You know, machine stitching would be a really fun way to go, uh, although very costly. Um, and the leather that I have is, is somewhat thick, so I would, I would need a machine that would be pretty beefy to get through it. But for now, the hand stitching works just fine. You know, it was, it was a year ago that I got the Glowforge, well, a little over a year. And then uh, shortly after that, you know, I started cutting sheaths out and then learned how to hand stitch. And I've been doing that since. Had known nothing about, you know, hand stitching leather. But um, 
you know, YouTube's a great source of information. There's a lot of good, good teachers, instructors out there. All right, so we got the little belt hanging, you guys. <laughs> That's the techn technical term, just in case you were wondering. All right, now stitching all the inserts. And like I said, that uh, that alligator skin, it's it's just a, a print. I would say it's like embossed onto the leather. So it's a veg tan leather. Uh, I'm assuming it's either, you know, wet pressed or wet rolled with that texture um, but it's got it's got really ni nice depth to it it's got a real good feel and look and I figured you know that would be a really good way to compliment compliment the build they had quite a few other different um, textures there you know, different animal skins that, I mean, heck, they even had, like, real animal skins. Um, I didn't see any real alligator leather, but that would be fun to work with. Even the, the beaver tail, like, in Will's video, that, uh, that looks like a really nice texture. Um, but they even had, uh, had hide with the skin still on them. Which, you know, even at that would be kind of a fun build to do. You know, Steph, she uh, she made her archery quiver herself, and um, she's got a hide, a deer hide, and uh, and she's really, really contemplating taking it all apart and lining the inside, which I think would be pretty neat. But yeah, again, lots and lots of stitching. Good time to get your groove on. Put on tunes. Think about life. <laughs> Contemplate why you're sitting in the same room for hours. Going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> uh, in all seriously, it is, it is pretty fun and relaxing. It, um... It will take some. It will take a toll on your hands after a while, though. Especially, um, you know, each time you stitch through and pull pull the string taut, um, the thread likes to get in between like your pinky pinky finger like bends your joints. And after doing that over and over and over and over and over, that little pinky joint just gets really really raw. <laughs> so later in the video you'll see I'll put my my leather stitchy gloves on just to uh, keep my keep my pinkies from getting sliced open but yeah to anyone that's looking to get into leather and is worried about stitching there's no reason to fret it's easy to pick up and uh, and really worth it you know, that was one thing that was keeping me away from from doing the, you know, leather hand stitching. Just not knowing how to do it. But it's really easy, really simple. And really rewarding. Like, the overall look after stitching is... It just adds so much to the build. You know, before I was just doing, uh... Doing eyelets and doing, uh rivets and washers which you know is a great way to start and it, there's nothing wrong with it but you know the hand stitching although tedious is definitely it's definitely worth it all right I'll finish with the main parts now to stitch that seam. Uh, again though, the Glowforge cuts to a pretty large size. Um, and it also, I got the Glowforge Pro, which has a pass-through. Um, and I've not, I haven't used it yet. Like, I've seen it being demonstrated and used in videos. Uh, 
but the pass-through seems more, uh, you know, if you have something large or longer than the regular bed, you can open up the machine, cut part, and then scoot it through, and then cut more, and then scoot it through. Um, but with such small holes it, in such an array that they need to match up, you know, both on the front, the back, and the weld, um, I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to give that a, a test run <laughs> on this build. Because, you know, even if even if one hole is off, then every hole past that point uh, won't line up. So. Alright, um, here I am doing some, uh, some suede that I have. This suede I've used for uh, my prop sword handles um, for years now. Really great suede. It's from Tandy Leather. Um, but yeah, I just thinned it out. And glued it behind the buttons so that they wouldn't scratch the blade when it goes in and out of the sheath. Yeah, kind of a makeshift baseball-ish stitch <laughs> down the down the center seam. Center seam. All right, now starting the huge, huge stitching part. Got the gloves on and everything. Uh, you know, the rule of thumb is, you know, depending on how thick your leather is, you need to account for, you know, that, that overall length times five, sometimes times four if you're using thin leather. Um, but on this one, I did that overall length of where I'm stitching and times that by six, which ended up giving me, man, it was like just over six feet of, uh, of thread. So, the tediousness of, of stitching, you know, regular, is now multiplied by every time I stitch, I have to pull through, you know, six feet of, uh, of thread per each stitch. You know, and it gets shorter as you go, but... But yeah, something to keep in mind. You don't really think you're going to use a lot of thread until you start doing it, and you're like, oh, okay. I need a metric ton of thread. All right, all done, ready to go. Popping rivets. And uh, these, oh my gosh, it was like the day before the, uh, the chopper challenge was due. These finally showed up. Uh, I ordered them off knife kits, you know, that's where I get most of my Kydex and Kydex supplies. Um, these are actual real brass, they're not coated or anything like that. Um, I had ordered them and they got lost by USPS for like three weeks and I was like coming down to the wire. I was almost gonna have to use my, my black eyelets that I have. Um, those I keep in stock, but the, uh, the brass ones, you know, I just order per per necessary need. But yeah, I came down to the wire and they finally came in, so I popped them through and... Now editing videos. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the leather build so far. Um, I'll go ahead and cut it short and, uh, and leave you guys with the final picks of the cleaver and the, and the sheath on the cleaver. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the build. Hope you guys enjoyed the cleaver, the sheath. And uh, appreciate you watching. I will definitely, definitely see you next time. So uh, take care.